So here we go. This one's called Gasoline Fumes. I remember laying in the back of a green Ford Econoline van built in 1975. Must have been 1983, the first time I smelled gasoline. And there's nothing more American than the smell of gasoline. We were heading to Tulsa to visit Aunt Daisy. The sliding door was open and Dad was filling up the tank outside Oklahoma City. Mom stood outside the bathroom door telling my brother not to touch anything. Gas was a dollar and a quarter and there were always free two liter bottles of cola with each fill up. Truck stops like these were sprinkled along interstate highways throughout Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. They were called Stuckies, and they were famous for their rubber steak and cheese sandwiches. <laughs> they all had gift shops full of t-shirts and knickknacks that proved to family and friends that we had driven through places like Oklahoma. There's nothing more American than the rural motorcycle caravans and tractor trailers burping off in the distance. Dad slid the van door shut. Mom made everyone wash their hands again. I pretended to drive our van from the back seat using a roll of duct tape as a steering wheel, watching stories blur together at 65 miles per hour. We listened to songs from the 1950s on the radio and tried to get every trucker we passed to blare their horns. We looked at houses in the middle of nowhere and wondered why anyone would want to live so far away. We counted endless oil wells. I thought I could listen to conversations from phone lines if I followed them on the window with my finger. We drove almost everywhere, rolled across most lower 48 states. Mom and Dad wanted us to see places most people only get to visit in photographs. That summer, my brother and I were photographed at, the, at a rest area wearing t-shirts that said we went on vacation to Oklahoma. <laughs> Gasoline smells different next to interstate highways. There's nothing more American than the, than the interstate. Nothing more American than watching America move. All right. This next one is called The Fashion Critic's Sunday Outfit. Word has it he had a sheet of acid in his pocket during a thunderstorm. He's a reenactment of history's worst fashion decisions. Work overalls turned into leisure shorts, way too small, cut up to crotch, wrapped around a skinny gala of nerd now hip. Sunday errands, he's walking in jelly shoes and toeless leather socks. Wearing a sunburn instead of a t-shirt, looking at Chicago through the peach tint of his dead granny's reading glasses. <laughs> All right, this one's uh, called Every Day Should Be Record Store Day. The Denver Sun's a close talker, taking shade under a trucker hat that says, I'm not trash, I'm thrash. 32 ounces of ice cold cola and whiskey in a styrofoam cup, holding up foot traffic on 13th Avenue's skinny sidewalk, slow walk and sip to Wax Tracks record to buy 45s and flip through magazines. Blasting a testament cassette tape through broken headphones. An original Walkman duct taped together works all right if the batteries don't fall out. The hiss and squiggles of analog sounds good enough. Shitty good, better than I can remember. All right, this is kind of about a bar I used to hang out at in Denver, Colorado. It's called You Get What You Get and Like It, a fictionalized version. <laughs> it started out like any other happy hour. It's the kind of place the bartender would be acting like he's listening to the regulars while he polishes plastic cups. It'd be that kind of place if the bartender wasn't shot dead. It was his first day shift and no one told him to give the money to anyone who wags a gun in his face. When dubs cry by prints flying louder than conversation level out of the jukebox, nobody says nothing. Angels with Dirty Faces by Sham69 plays above the regulars' clanking glasses. A pile of cash next to the register where they make their own change. While the youngest of them slips around behind the bar on buckshot and blood, standing above the bartender's body refreshing everyone's draft beer. Just like any other happy hour, piles of peanut shells under bar stools and mustaches full of foam. 
The bartender was shot two or three beers ago. The regulars thought he was shit anyhow. Nobody says nothing. The regulars aren't going to leave because they have no other place to go. Not even murder and burglary can stop their routine of you get what you get and like it. Uh, this is called The Cook and the Dancer. It's about this couple that kind of roamed around the old neighborhood in Denver I lived in. The meth cook lives and works out of his car. Routine of random visits to suburban hardware stores and pharmacies for supplies. Makes batches of meth in his trunk. Drives a bomb around Capitol Hill for days until it's ready. She, was, she always wanted to be a dancer, but she always had a hitch in her giddy up. Crystal sells crystal and sugar packets across the street from Wax Tracks Records, and while she waits tables at a diner called The White Spot. Scab covered gray skins, too high to die, going together, going to get out of Denver for good. The cook and the dancer, new American gothic, sounds of rusty scratching, smell of ammonia and shit your pants. Meant for each other, no matter how short forever is. Uh, years ago, I went to a punk rock bowling tournament in Vegas, and I didn't have a hotel room, so I roamed around all the um, old casinos, and this is my experience. <laughs> when I get to Vegas, I feel more like Jerry Lewis than Wayne Newton listening to my ex-girlfriend scream at me over the telephone. I'm watching burlesque, the rat-tat-tat of the drummer, and all the hips and arms a hip and arm man can want. I wander casino floors hunting a waitress that looks just like Joan Benet Ramsey. I watch young record collectors and rock stars getting ready to go steady for the weekend. Stoic men play baccarat. Punks at blackjack tables. Old lady at a slot machine and we're all wondering who's pulling whose arm. The gamblers make me feel more alone than when I'm at home. A writer tells me the things that make him the best kind of consumer while an artist looks for his yo-yo under housewives throwing dice. Swingers satin through lounges with open shirts, gold chains, and chest hair everywhere. They're trying to put the massage back into misogyny. <laughs> I meet a good old boy who shows me a picture of a 300-pound pig named Darling. He introduces me to his friend who says he has a shower big enough for two men and a dog. <laughs> I see a couple try to pay for their wedding with food stamps. I buy a $3 camera from a stutterer. I steal a sign from a beggar that says the Empire killed my family. I bet he needs money for Jedi lessons. I swim through scars in silicone in a cheap hotel room, ten porn channels and nothing's on. I'm the only one in this city wearing a safety belt. I'm the only one who can't survive. People leave things in Vegas every Sunday. I go to the desert to bury myself neck deep in all the glamour I can afford, knowing Denver will let me sleep when I get home. Uh, this one's called Party Boy. He's too skinny to keep a woman warm at night. Quiet and creepy at the disco. He's taller than Prince, but shorter than Ronnie James Dio. Half Johnny Thunders, half Jane Fonda, and a ha whole lot of bad cocaine. Lips puckered around a thin mustache for shuffling out of a toilet stall with four other sets of feet. Quiet and creepy at the disco, he stole his girlfriend's pants, put on all of her makeup, and sold all of her stuff. Wiggles to his favorite monster ballad, thinks about his next haircut while he looks for lost change on the dance floor. <laughs> Uh, this one's called Heart Sucks. Uh, Self-explanatory. Never heart anyone who doesn't like the taste of water. Never heart anyone who's dated more than one drummer. Don't fall in heart with anyone who had early childhood gothic tendencies. Never heart anyone who has a dog that wants to hump you at the end of your first date. Never heart anyone who won't ride a bus. Never fall in heart if someone disputes that Conan O'Brien is a comedy god. Crazy isn't always cute. Don't fall in heart with anyone who brushes their teeth with whiskey in the morning. The first kiss is murder. Never stay with anyone who's 
learned everything they know from the pages of textbooks. Sometimes a van makes a better classroom. Never heart, with it, never heart anyone who says they've never done something. Chances are they've done it way more than you. <laughs> Never stay in heart with anyone who makes various religious references during sex. They're not thinking about you, they're dreaming about William Shatner. <laughs> never heart anyone who's never mopped a floor. And relationships are like jobs. You don't always want to remember where you've worked. <laughs> uh, this one's called All Major Credit Cards, it's accepted. It's about a preacher. The preacher whispers screams something about mixed emotions and temptation of the flesh. He's not yelling, he's just trying to get everyone's attention. Three-piece suit wrapped around his portly figure talking about hunger, sacrifice, and humility. More production than an ABBA concert, it sounds like he's sobbing under the stage lights. More sweat than tears rolling down his spray tan face. The swell of string music. The audience holds their arms straight up and cups their hands like little satellite dishes. The preacher looks into the camera and blames Satan for war, poverty, Halloween, and rough sex. He jumps and paces around the pulpit, takes off his jacket, speaks in tongues, dives off the stage, runs past the band, the cameramen, and the cue card holders. High fives the congregation up and down the aisles. On the way back to the stage, he hugs his wife, winks at his mistress and kisses his boyfriend. The preacher calmly returns to the pulpit and closes his eyes. He whispers screams a prayer to heal the world's scabs and cellulite. An organ wails. He pauses and asks the deacons to pass another collection plate. This one's called Value Without a Knee. It's about a really awful hotel room I stayed in in Portland, Oregon. Welcome to the Value Inn. Enjoy your stay. It's the only hotel in town that spells the word value without an E. <laughs> room 203 smells like Lysol, maxi pad, perfume, and latex. There's free cable, but no soap. Please don't feed the bed bugs scratched into the side of the dresser. Half can of Coors Light spoons a Gideon Bible in the nightstand drawer. No smoking allowed, but there's an ashtray glued to the top of the television. Wall-mounted bottle opener next to the toilet. There's DNA all over this place. Dents and handprints on a loose headboard. Blown out bed springs. Mattress fucked on since 1983. And there's a clown painting on the wall that's watching me hide my wallet. Meth stains claw corners where the ceiling holds the walls together. And there's a Scooby-Doo Band-Aid stuck on the bathroom mirror that makes me feel like it'll fix everything. Five-star rating on that one? Huh? Five stars on that hotel? Oh, yeah. No, five stars, Yelp. Yes. All right. This one's uh, on the... For more things that's gross, this is about riding the subway in uh, Chicago. And it's called Nobody Wash Their Hands. Stonemasons lean against a, ball they, a wall they brick by brick to eating dusty lunches. Panhandlers only accept dollar bills. Can't tell if the barista thinks I'm like her parents in society. Can't tell if I'm one of the people she blames for everything. Can't tell if her pants are covered with pigeon shit or if she's wearing acid wash jeans. <laughs> a man in hot pink shorts stands in the corner of the subway platform up on his tippy toes. Like a pissing ballerina like a master of puddles. He acts like nothing happened here. Nothing happened here because nobody cares. Nothing happened here because I'm the only one that notices. His strut toward the train says, finish the business, as he touches everything along the way. This one's about a Denver newsman. His name was Phil Keating. I think he's on Fox National now. This is my experience with him in Denver, Colorado. A Denver newsman was seen intoxicated at a punk rock concert. An up-and-coming anchorman was seen extremely wasted last night while attending a Circle Jerks concert at the Ogden Theater in Denver, Colorado. There is little information at this time. 
However, we can say he was allegedly seen wearing a sports jacket, belt, and boots made out of alligator skin. In a statement made by a bartender, the newsman only ordered drinks made south of the Mexican-American border. Witnesses have said that his eyes were extremely bloodshot and a white substance was dripping from his nose. Apparently, the newsman tried to enter the venue without paying by using a backstage pass he acquired at last summer's Aspen Jazz Festival. The doorman recalls looking at the newsman's identification and said the newsman acted like a total douchebag. He was also overheard telling two waitresses and a member of the security staff that he wanted to quote unquote fuck them like a werewolf. <laughs> 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 <laughs>